Bingo, we're back. It's Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Okay. This is Think Tech Talks. Today we're talking about Hoa Oahu. I say that right? Dot mm -hmm. com, which is a new and fantastic media channel uh, that we're going to discuss in some detail today with a number of people from the mm, Journalism and Communications Department at UH Manoa. First, Assistant Professor Brett Obergard. I got it right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and bringing your two students who are both seniors, who are both in journalism and are about to earn their degree, so this is perfect, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and, and one is uh, Jordan Segundo, and the other is Lovely Hailey. Hello. Thank you for coming on, you thank guys. You Great us. to have you here. What a, th what a thrill, I tell you, to have you here. Okay, so <clears throat> this, is, this is something that came to my attention by an email, I guess you guys sent around, and I locked onto it, <laughs> and I called you. Because I want to talk about what happened. So you're teaching a course what in, in journalism in this case, right? And uh, you, but you could have you could have communication students in there too, and uh, so these are two of the people in your class, and this was a special semester. So the first thing is tell us how you got into journalism, Brett. Uh, what what drew you to the flame, so to speak? Oh wow, okay. So do some little history here. Uh, I would say that I was a uh, undergraduate college student looking for my purpose in life, and I was in a journalism class um, looking over the student newspaper and complaining about how poorly it was written and how poorly it was done. And so my uh, teacher happened to say, why don't you go down there and show them how to do it? And that was the beginning of my journey. I walked down to the basement of the building, said I'd like to try this. I uh, started writing stories and fell in love with journalism. Where? Was that here? This is at Washington State University. Okay. What's the difference between a journalist and everyone else in the world? I'd say a journalist, uh, <laughs> per, that's, a, <laughs> yeah, that's a big question, but I'd say a journalist uh, more than anything pursues truth as opposed to um, persuasion and tries to get um, everything out of the picture that isn't uh, factually or objectively true. And if there are uh, conflicting subjective accounts, then put, put, putting those together and letting the audience decide which one they find more persuasive. Yeah, and, and do journalists look at the world, I mean, as people, they look at the world differently than the rest of us? Yeah, I like to call it the journalist uh, ideology. And I think it's a way of uh, managing and being in the world where you're questioning everything, you're skeptical about everything. Not in a cynical, uh, negative way, but in a, a way where you feel like uh, there are questions that aren't being answered that you want answered. So to make sure that um, we're the ones that ask those questions, mm -hmm. and we're the ones that bring that information to light. I, I consider journalists intellectuals. Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you agree with me? Yeah, I don't think there's any negative in that. Yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's no, no negative at all. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a... Uh, uh, core component of journalism that is about intellectualism and about thinking through things deeply and always challenging your uh, biases and um, preconceived notions. Like when we go into a story idea, we have idea we have thoughts about it like, oh, I think uh, coral bleaching is a real problem in Hawaii. Don't know that, but I think it is. And then our job as a journalist is to go to the sources who are making decisions about this and sources who are collecting data about this and asking them the questions and finding out if it really is an issue or not. Fantastic discovery and adventure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Every Digging story is an adventure. <laughs> so what is it like to teach journalism? What is it like for you? Oh, I think it's the, the greatest subject you could possibly teach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a subject where you uh, every day wake up and, and challenge the knowledge of the world and say, is there something more we can learn, something more we can know about? Uh, similar to philosophy, it's always uh, yearning for deeper, more mindful um, uh, thoughts about the world. Yeah, I, I signed my email, Matayana, which is a Buddhist concept of doing good for the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what journalists do, because in their mind, they're looking across the way, looking outside, they're looking to try to enrich people's lives. Uh, so. It's a great thing you guys are doing. Yeah, and so who would do it if journalists didn't do it? Right. That's the big well, question. everyone would, would, would change the facts on you, and then you right. wouldn't have any confidence about anything you heard. Yeah, everything would be a negotiation. Yeah. 
that's a very uncomfortable place to be. Yeah, well, it's, and it's not a good world that way. Right. So um, this semester, with your 21 students, is it? How many students? 21 mm -hmm. students. 21 students. Mm -hmm. Was different. Very Something different. Something came up. Well, yeah. Can you talk about how that emerged and, and why? Uh, I'd be happy to. This is uh, unusual in my teaching career. I've been teaching for more than a decade, and uh, before the semester, a group of students came to me and said, uh, this journalism capstone class, which means the last class in, this, in the whole program, um, we would like to do something different with it. You know, it's been taught the same way for many years, and we'd really like to try something new. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about that, and I thought the best idea would be to come to the students with a fresh slate and say, okay, day one, what do you want to do? <laughs> we have no preconceived notions. We have, no, we, have, we have nothing but this table and the 21 people around it and our ideas. And so really the job was to put the um, agency into the students and say, you can do whatever you'd like. You just tell me what it is and, and we'll do it. Well, but what, what to get to where? Just education or was there more here in this, in this concept? The pursuit of journalism. How do you want to pursue journalism? As an actual pursuit. Right. Not just learning about it, but doing it, right. using it pursuit of the ideology. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow, and what a great day that was. It was a great day. It was a great it, it, day. One of the best days of my career. Great. And, right. and the students um, just bought into that 100%. Yeah. And these two are great examples of that. that they took on all leadership roles, created all the jobs, all the ideas, all the missions, statement, the um, structure, all of it was decided by them in their own um, in their own way, through their own process, uh, democratically, they voted, came to consensus on almost every uh, decision, and then that led to the whole Oahu site. Yeah, that's modern education, isn't it? That's I very valuable. So. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. so. I think so. I hope so. As many places as possible. Well, let's take a moment with you guys, okay? Uh, let's talk to you first, Lovely. Um, so you heard this from Brett in the class. What reaction? I was excited. So we came into the class not knowing what to expect because we knew we were doing something different this semester. We didn't know exactly what it was. Um, capstone. And capstone. Yeah, this, this capstone yeah. class. Okay. Um, so we were really excited just because it's the last class that we have to take before we graduate. So we wanted it to be something really strong and out really powerful. The class was all seniors? A majority. There yeah. are some okay. juniors. Um, but basically, he told us that we were going to start everything from scratch and the students were going to run the organization. So that just really got us motivated for this semester. This doesn't happen all the time. No, no. <laughs> it doesn't happen where they like let the students actually run the class. So this was something brand new. Okay, up to that point, okay, you had had, what, three years of journalism and communications? Yes. And what kind of a person were you at that point? At that point, um, I think I was a really good student journalist. And what I mean by student journalist is I was taking it a lot, learning a lot. This year, from this capstone class, I became more active and I became a producer and taking on this leadership skill and actually doing it myself has made me think differently. So now it's not only just being a student, but we were able to teach each other and learn from each other and I think that was what made this. So collaboration. Different. Yes. Mm -hmm. As never before. Mm -hmm. But also I, I hear in your, in your discussion, I hear confidence yes. as never before. Yeah, yeah. It's that feedback. It's that um, experience. What about you, Jordan? What, what were you like at the beginning of the class? I think, well, coming into it, I actually took a, a summer course with Brett and, uh, you know, expressed to him, hey, let's, we, we want something different, something new. So coming in, I was just excited about it. Um, I was always curious, you know, as a, as a person in life, but coming into this class and having the opportunity to kind of work as a team and really start something from scratch was, you know, really exciting for us. Yeah. and kind of taking everyone's individual skills and passions and um, bringing it all together. Were you, were you guys committed to journalism as a career in going yeah. into your senior year? Mm -hmm. Yes. That was already decided. This is not just a, a drill here. This is the real deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you realize that journalism does not pay well. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's all about the passion. And so like what, you said, what is it about the passion in journalism you that attracts you? I, I think making a difference. You know, in, in journalism, there's so many different aspects, whether you're on camera or behind. It's, you know, you have to have the passion of, of, of truth and, and storytelling. Um, 
and find ways to, to share that with other people. Up to this point in this class, had you been writing? And for whom? About what? Up until this point, I was doing a lot of things for school. Um, and I was working at the same time while also being a student. So it was really hard to do anything for outside of class. So I was really organized um, with trying to hone my skills before I brought it elsewhere. I feel like after this capstone class, I'm able to do my internships now. So this semester was really the semester that I was able to get myself out there. And HOA is actually the first thing I've ever done outside of instruction and something that's been published. So I'm yeah. really proud of that. I want to talk about that. How about you, George? You know, I've done a lot, uh, I guess, related to entertainment type of uh, reporting. And so I decided to go to, to UH and finish my journalism degree just to kind of, I guess, get more experience uh, in with the hard news and kind of stray away from that. And I learned a lot. And with HOA, I was able to share another passion, which is, you know, the web design and really working with other students on a leadership role and presenting something that we could be proud of and something that may be different that not a lot of news organizations have been presenting. So it sounds like it sort of migrated from writing for school to web design to sort of deliver what you're writing. Mm -hmm. A lot of different multimedia components. You know, some, the, the first uh, cycle of stories, it was a text, and this last cycle, they incorporated video and visuals as well. So it's, uh, it's kind of how journalism is going, multimedia. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to take a break first, though, so we can regroup and come back and dig right into exactly how this class went, how it proceeded, um, how you organized it together, or maybe they did it all by themselves. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the flowering, the uh, metamorphosis, if you will. We'll be right back after this short break, you'll see. Hi, I'm Chris Letham, and I'd like to invite you to come and watch my show every Wednesday at 3. I'm interested in a variety of issues that have to do with politics and our local business economy. And I'd like to bring on guests who like to talk about everything from technology to social media to what we can be doing to improve our environment. And so I'd like to invite you every Wednesday at 3 to stay and watch my show here with Think Tech Hawaii. And I'll see you there. Hi, my name is Cindy Matsuki, and I host the show High Growth with HTBC on Think Tech Hawaii. This is the show where we talk about all things tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing, because there's so many things going on in Hawaii, and more people should know about them. So this is the program that you can come and find out about all the things happening in Hawaii. And this show also airs on Level 54, along with Think Tech Hawaii. And it broadcasts live every, every other Tuesday at 3 p.m. So don't forget, check out the show Tuesday, 3 p.m. every other week. High growth with HTDC. Thanks. That's the other class. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Brett Opergaard and Jordan Segundo and lovely Hailey, uh, all from the journalism school. And Brett was their professor in the capstone class in journalism this semester. Okay, you get one more semester, right? It's a coast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brad, what did you see in front of you with this class? I mean, how did you see them? How did you perceive them as, um, you know, the human resource that would do the special job you had in mind? Well, I knew they had a lot of potential. I've had uh, several of them in other classes. Uh, I thought that they could do something great. I had uh, full confidence in that, but I didn't know what it was going to be, so that was somewhat scary and nerve-wracking and you know if you if people didn't engage then the whole thing would have collapsed yeah. so uh, the first kind of challenge was to get a community built to get everybody working together how'd you do that I think it started with them uh, talking about their mission and what they really wanted to do and they came together with the idea of this is the kind of news channel we want to create this is our mission and here's the audience we want to serve and when they had a complete consensus on that they were very excited to try to do that. So you were kind of a facilitator. Um, that's really a sort of an enviable way to go these days because the kids grow, they flower in front of you that way. It's really great. There's so and much more did. learning that takes place. <laughs> yes. I mean, there, there's, an, there's a very limited amount of learning in the lecture uh, recitation cycle. Yeah, I mean, yeah. almost no learning. And it is, it's not proven to be long-term learning either. Yeah. If you test people a year or two years after uh, a lecture class, they know almost nothing about what they learned there. Yeah. But if you get them involved in a project and have them do things, then they're learning all the aspects that they need to learn, so it's, so it's customized to that person, 
and also it's dynamic in the sense that they're um, learning about how to work together, how to meet deadlines, how to produce things. There's just so much yeah, to it. It's very valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, and I've heard it so many times at this table, that <clears throat> this is for successful people. People who are successful in their fields. There was one teacher and one class and one project that changed them, that redirected their thinking and that, you know, confirmed to them that this was the right place to be. So let me ask you, what, what role does Brett play in that? You know, Brett, I'd say Brett plays an important role along with our other instructors in this 401 class because this is actually a part of the, there's two classes uh, in 401. One is more of a broadcast or television and this is the multimedia channel and I'd have to say Brett and uh, our other instructors have played a big role in giving us the opportunity to grow and expand and use, you know, things we've learned in prior classes and kind of expand on those things. Are you of the same mind? What part of that do you agree with? <laughs> um, everything. I feel like before coming into this class, everybody would say you have potential, you have potential. Um, I think what Brett did differently was that he showed me what it was and he didn't just tell me it. He helped me find what I was good at and he helped me do it, like help me find it on my own. And I think that was important. What about the old dugout problem? In other words, uh, uh, you know, um, not everybody gets to battle all the time, except you, if you require it. Uh, you know, sometimes you get real talent over here and not so much talent over there, but everybody is equally motivated. What happened in this class? Uh, was everybody playing, you know, full strength? Was everybody fully participating in this process you're talking about? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Even the shy one, the <laughs> yeah. bashful boys, whatnot. <laughs> yeah, I think what was unique was that we all had our different positions, mm -hmm. and so we really owned our position, and we worked hard to make sure that our position, we didn't pick positions for people, we actually helped them find a position that they really wanted to do. And so because everybody were, plays. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, they, I mean, a key part of that was at the very beginning of class, everybody wrote job descriptions. So they decided what the jobs would be. It wasn't handed down from some legacy structure or something like that. So every student had the chance to write down the job description. Then we had, you know, hundreds of jobs that people could do. We decided what were the most important jobs, and the students prioritized those into the top 21 jobs. And then they could they uh, competed for those jobs through an interview process. Can, can you give me an, an example of what those jobs were? Well, we had some standard jobs like reporter, but we also had things that came up like, uh, you know, public relations manager, which I, you know, never would have necessarily included in a class, but the students said this would be an important part of our uh, creation of a media organization is to tell people we have this organization and tell people about it. And that's probably the person that, that emailed you. Yeah. It might be the reason we're here. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of interesting um, jobs created like a news assistant was one that you never would maybe plan into a class, but the students were, would say, we really need help transcribing and doing some of these little jobs that, cool. uh, you know, that are kind of thankless jobs. Yeah. But necessary, but necessary. And it was a true conclusion. It was valid. Right. And yeah. by them coming together and saying, we need this job, and then the student taking the job thinking, uh, this is important. We all decided this was important. There were like I said, dozens and dozens of jobs less important that we kicked off the list, then the, that student bought into that idea and uh, really helped out. That's great. So what I, there's a little gap I want to close on, though. You decided you had a complete carta blanca at the outset, and somewhere in there you decided you were going to build an organization. Mm -hmm. What was behind that decision? It sounds like you wanted to build a company, a journalistic enterprise of some kind, is that, that came from Brett or did that come from you guys? That came from us, basically. I mean, he came in and said, how and what do you want to create? You know, do you want to create a, a website or, or what's the channels that you want to deliver your, your, your news and your story? So as a class, we came to the conclusion that, hey, we want to have it on a website and you know, use the social media to, to publish it and, and get it out there and let people know about it. Yeah. And, oh, and you decided there would be a website. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is also an interesting decision. You could have decided to have a, a studio like this too. Uh, you could have decided to I don't know do a blog, different. Uh, so that also came from the class. A website. You decided that was the best 
delivery method for what you had in mind. Yes. The best way to express your journalism. Yes. Let's look at it. Sure. Okay. You can tell us how you designed it. <laughs> Who does what for it? Okay. Can we see it in? Okay. There we go. There's the website. We're broadcasting that picture right now. Awesome. It's got it's got a clip of clouds moving. Cool. <laughs> yeah, this is our front page. This is actually our home page, and we decided to go with a presentation that wasn't your typical news organization with the header. And we, I guess, we, we kind of inspired by uh, could we say Huff Post, Huff Post Highline, which is you know an innovative way that's telling stories. So we kind of went with this sort of overall design, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> There's the class. I like it. That's our class. I love that. I love this part. This is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> So we really wanted a website that was interactive and, and engaging um, and exciting to look at so that when you come to it, you know, it'll encourage you to come back for more information. So you can actually click on one of the stories if you go up there. We just published a, our second cycle of stories if you go up to the top. And tell us what to uh, click on. Which one? Uh, right there, let's say Hawaii Coral Reefs. Okay. This story was done by our investigative team. I there. noticed that that was different than the others in the sense that you had now investigative reporters as well as regular reporters. Yeah, well, they broke the teams up into investigative and features. Uh, and again, features, I think, is it's important to distinguish as not some kind of um, you know, second-class form of journalism, more, but more people-oriented journalism and more um, oriented toward human narrative as opposed to the investigative is more uh, oriented toward digging up, uh, you know, corruption or problems in society and then trying to f find out how, uh, you know, potential solutions or what's being done about it, that kind of thing. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your investigative process. Um, that's, that's not easy. That's the difficult, expensive, risky part of journalism. You know, you got to be careful, too. Get sued. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Take risks. <clears throat> so. Uh, Coral Reefs, investigative team, how many on the team? There is eight. Eight? Eight, eight members. Mm -hmm. Okay, whoa, oh, wow. Very few stories in the world have eight people involved <laughs> as collaborators, so <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> so how did, that, how did that function? I mean, <clears throat> they were assigned by the group, they were assigned the story about Coral Reefs. Uh, what did they do to get the data? Well, again, the story, the story emerged out of their discussion. So they with, were... With but their group met and said, you know, what are the stories we're interested in? And all eight of them pitched out stories. Then they came to the idea that, hey, we want to do the Coral Reef story this time. Okay. Now, to get that story, what did they do? Well, we divided... Were either of you on that team? No. No. Okay. So um, for the investigative team, we have it divided by two, three reporters. Um, and then we have two videographers. And then we also have a graphics person, we have a quality control person, and the way we did that was that we had three people reporting. Um, that's why the stories typically have five parts to it, and then they use the videographers. And everybody played their part into it. Uh, and the leads, we assigned leads to each team, so the leads were in charge of making sure all the work was distributed equally. In other words, you didn't miss a trick. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> this is going to be a great story. <laughs> and Lovely had a really important role in, in everything. She, you want to explain your the role in all of this? In so the organization? My, <laughs> my role is managing editor, so it's just making sure that everybody works together and uh, how the work is being distributed and just managing over the team. Yeah. Were so within the organization, Lovely was a head honcho. She. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> were so you, the main were you guy brutal? is Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, and I tried. No. No. <laughs> but so what's it like being a managing editor? Um, it was a great learning experience. Um, it was interesting to learn with different personalities, um, and I loved it. I actually went into it not really knowing what to come out of it, but I'm so excited and I'm so happy that I picked Managing Editor and that the class voted for me because now I can walk away with a lot of different leadership skills. Yes, indeed. You know, there are a lot of managing er uh, editors in the, uh, the conventional journalistic world who are hard. You know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, who was the guy in Superman, you know, Perry, Perry, Perry White, mm -hmm. the <laughs> managing e editor of the paper in Metropolis, yeah. hard-nosed guy, yeah. uh, sort of Jimmy Cagney type of personality, um, tough, tough, so, but it can be done in, in, in 
you know, in a civil, civil way and with respect, if not more than that, with friendship and uh, get a better product, as yeah. in everything else in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's great, yeah. So those skills will stand you in good stead no matter what you do, yeah. What were you doing at the, at the I event? was a, the web developer and web designer. So I took that role on because, uh, you know, coming into the class, I've done it as a, as a hobby, I guess, creating websites. But I knew that the, the look and the, I guess, the medium we'd be sharing our stories would be so important. So I, I decided to take that on. And it was a big role, uh, especially towards the end of when we were ready to p publish our stories. Everything kind of just happened all at that, that last moment. But, uh, you know, really took some time and really thought about how we wanted to present our, our organization online. Did uh, the term civil beat ever come across your, your desk? Um, well, I would say uh, civil beat's a great organization in this community, and we are definitely inspired by their work. Mm -hmm. uh, civil beat actually um, wrote about our channel when it came out there, and so they're, I think, uh, equally or or at least um, interested in what we're doing, and uh, they admire it. We've had I a lot did, of comments. I did see that. I saw. Yeah, that. we've had a lot of comments from around the uh, country, of people uh, finding our stories and saying how uh, great they look and great they are. Yeah, and the one thing before I forget, this is you know sort of the port parole. You know what that means? <coughs> port parole. Yeah. I'm going to find out right now. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's the message that you want to deliver. <clears throat> the port parole of our discussion is that this website really has legs, what you did here, because it doesn't end at, at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned before, Brennan, you know, this is going to go on. This is going to be a container for a, a civil beat, if you will, for the stories that later students write. And they will, and you know, and you won't recognize it in a year, I promise you. Mm -hmm. It will be completely different <laughs> because everybody will have a whack at it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, so what uh, program did you use to put the website I together? actually used uh, uh, Wix. So it's a, you know, I've, I've had experience with, you know, HTML and Java, but uh, with Wix, it's just, it was so simple and you could customize everything. So I had a, a basic layout and we had designs and we, I worked together with uh, the, the teams and said, what is your vision? How do you want your story to be presented, you know, with video or different elements? And I worked with them in the overall design and went online and Spent many countless nights putting it together for them. <laughs> yeah, and I'm and happy. I'm, I'm, this I'm, is a custom website. Yes, you weren't working on a Word uh, WordPress theme or anything. No. This is all yours. All custom, mm -hmm. custom yeah. design and built. So, do you have a system for introducing the material? In other words, I write a story. I want to put it on the website. I want a stack of stories. You know, like the oldest at the bottom, the newest at the top. What kind of work is involved? What kind of process there? You know, I, th I think it's just working with everyone and deciding how we're going to present it, because it could really be presented in any old fashion. Mm -hmm. So I think how we have it is the newest on top, and um, yeah, that's, that's how we decide. And our to goal go is to never do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fall into the template uh, formula formulaic type mode. And so each time, each story, we just want to challenge ourselves, to, like, how are we going to do this different this time? So if you look at the stories we have on there now, each one is, is quite a bit different. This uh, uh, Coral Reef story is m almost a documentary film. Um, the uh, hiking story includes social media and a lot of other um, interesting elements to it where we tap into uh, social media pictures from people around the community. So we actually enlarge the class even more to include um, you know, citizen journalists. So, and taking messages from social media mm -hmm. and writing them up, so to speak. Well, we included, data. yeah, we included a, that particular story is about an illegal hike in uh, on Oahu. Aren't and you coming to a rather brusque conclusion? <laughs> Was it illegal? It is illegal. <laughs> okay, but that doesn't I know that in practice. True. <laughs> but uh, you know, is it is it pra pragmatically, practically illegal? No, because lot, hundreds of people do that hike every uh, day. And the social media inclusion helped us document that this is not something that uh, is unusual or forbidden or secretive. It's just common knowledge. People around the island do this hike. It's really a, a legality issue more than anything. Yeah. People trying to avoid getting sued. Did you take a position on that? Did you, did you for example, point out that maybe it shouldn't be illegal? 
Uh, well, we haven't been working on editorials. So I wanted to ask you yeah, about that. Right yeah. now, we're just taking the, the middle of the road reporting okay. uh, perspective. So let's um, illuminate the issue, hear from people uh, about the issue, and let the reader decide. Okay, when we come back from this break, uh, I would like to talk about the future in terms of editorials, where you, where you go and, and what you accept from people who are not in the class from the community, because don't you agree that every news organ, as with the social media uh, element of information, data, thought coming in, uh, every, every news organ has to, be, has to breathe. So when we come back, let's talk about editorials. What's going to happen with that? We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life, why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Okay, we're back, we're live, and it's a cliffhanger on editorials. You know, because people, and people need editorials, I think. Whether they really need them or not, I'm not so sure. Because, um, you know, they, sometimes they cannot integrate the information that you throw at them well enough to actually come up with a well-formed opinion. And what we need in this country and the world is well-formed opinion. So, I mean, for example, if I see an editorial in the New York Times, I'm going to take that real serious. I'm going to consider whether I should adopt that as my own. I may not, but it's a start. So what are you going to do with editorials? Well, uh, I would say right now that's uh, far in the future, uh, although I, I agree they're important. And the New York Times is a great example of how to handle editorials in the sense that they write their editorial, they take comments, they vet comments, and they have a separate section where you can read their vetted comments. You can have access to the, all the raw comments, which is fine, but you also can read the vetted comments that the staff looked at and said, this person is making a good point, we should look at that. So I think that's a, uh, a good evolutionary step in, in the editorial process. Uh, right now, I think there are plenty of opinions in the world and not enough public affairs reporting. So that's <laughs> Touché. Where, yeah. <laughs> Touché. It's, it's a sign curve, you know, <laughs> it, uh, sometimes like this and that. Yeah. But I, I, would, I would agree that uh, we, need, we need more good reporting, good facts uh, to reach our opinions, and we have to put challenge the challenge on people and make them digest those facts yeah because with social media people are are satisfied with opinions that maybe aren't well founded yeah and oftentimes they can be manipulated by that yeah so um, not only do the reporters need to do a better job of reporting but the audience needs to do a better job of seeking out multiple sources and digging deep into the ideas and stories that are important to them they should um, actively pursue that information as well um, in, a, in a, like I said, the journalistic I- ideology is beyond the industry and uh, it's not about necessarily making money with a newspaper or a TV station, it's about pursuing truth and trying to find that truth. Do you think this, uh, this could be another kind of civil beat of its own? Uh, granted that it's an academic experience, but it could also be an enterprise that, that gathers a following, uh, that has a lot of hits. Um, and that people in the community want to participate with. They want to read it, and then maybe they want to submit, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just like Civil Beat, kind of the university version. Wouldn't that be possible? From what you described, it sounds like that would be entirely possible going forward. We take a lot of inspiration from Civil Beat. We think what they do is uh, really exceptional. And they have the um, envious position of not having to rely on advertising. So that allows them to do a lot of things that most media channels can't do in other markets. And our situation is similar in a sense we don't have to sell advertising, we don't have to charge people to look at the content. We have the human resource of the students and the faculty to work on this. And our job, I think, is to get the information out there um, in as honest and fair a way as possible. Yeah, and but you've got to keep it as an academic experience because mm-hmm. the students are spending a, or academic time with it. 
Um, so for example, if I give a thumbs up, I didn't see a thumbs up thing, but if I give a thumbs up, then that would, that would certainly suggest that the writer of that article would get a better grade, no? Well, we separate the, uh, the classroom. That wasn't assessment. an easy yeah. question, okay. by the way. Well, we, yeah, I mean, we <laughs> completely separate the classroom assessment from the popular response. Because so, you know the popular response may not be all that well informed. Well, uh, I mean, the popular response might gravitate toward, um, you know, a picture about, you know, fuzzy cats or something. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it deserves an A. Right. And so we're not really pursuing the largest audience possible. We're pursuing the best audience possible. We're trying to make a difference in the media discourse here on the island. So that, I think, is a, is a bigger goal. And again, the, the beauty of our position is we don't have to sell advertising. We don't have to have uh, some you know, billionaire benefactor. We have the students who are interested and engaged, and they want to do something great. So we just, like I say, kind of open up the doors and let them do great things. And that's what these students have done. Well, a couple of questions about that. I mean, number one is, <clears throat> um, you guys, had you written for the web before? Because it's different, isn't it? Writing for the web is not the same. Mm -hmm. It's a different language almost. It's shorter, more concise, punchy. Right. <laughs> so was that, was that new for you? Or? Yeah, that was completely new for me. Yeah. How did you get into it? I mean, how did you learn about the differences? Um, so I think how I learned was that there's people, amazing people like Jordan, who's all into the web. And he helped me understand the differences between web and print because before this, I did a lot of print, but I wasn't really on the web. Um, two, Brett is really big in the class about multimedia, so I learned the multimedia aspect about it, um, and that's how we were able to move forward. And Jordan has been a great instructor, teacher with the web, <laughs> with all of us, because it's something new for all the students. Yeah. And with Valuable his experience, lesson, yeah. yeah, with his experience and his knowledge, we were able to do so well. Yeah. But this is, it's a learning process for everyone, even for me. And, you know, to have an instructor like Brett in there who has a lot of experience within journalism, with web and print, um, you know, he was able to really guide us and allow us to learn new skills and, and help teach one another. Video? Did I hear you put video up on this? We put video as well. Yeah, so, so is that part of the story? Is, is that the story? I mean, for example, you could put up video with a, with a teleprompter and have a newscaster report the whole story. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, where did you, how did you integrate the video into the writing of your stories on, on the on You know, the it was really all up to the, the teams. Uh, you know, this Coral Reef story, the investigative team decided that they wanted to do a documentary piece. So they went out and they shot all of their interviews. They put everything together and decided this is what we want to do, where the pr you know, the story before, which was on pesticides, it was all completely text with a few photos here and there. So it was really dependent on what their vision was. And we kind of worked within that parameters to make sure the quality that was presented, you know, the video was, was shot well, um, you know, that the stories were told well with the writing and, and everything involved with journalism overall. So this is your baby. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You've created it, this really. Is, you, yes. you must be very proud, and, <laughs> we are. and you have a possessory kind of feeling about. It. I would, for sure. But now, now, the next generation and generations to follow. Brett's going to bring them in, one class after another, one year group after another. And I'd like you to look at that, that 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 camera. That's uh, number two over there. Um, and it's a, it's a picture of a bunch of kids drinking in a bar, but hey, uh, <laughs> address, address your comments to them. The question I put to you is, what is your advice to the future classes who are working on your baby? Mm -hmm. What would you like them to do with it? That's a tough question. Um, I would like them to understand it's their own. and what they make of it, they should do the best they can because it is their baby. And that's something that they're gonna be proud of and that they have to take on with them. And it's something that they're gonna look back at and I hope that we can look back at it years from now and just look at it and be so proud of it. So just be proud of their efforts and everything they do and do the right thing. I think she would come around and consult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she would come around and say hi. Visiting professor, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lovely's done so well this semester. I mean, she. You know, she would have to talk with Brad and, and come to us, and, and any concerns we had, we directed it to her. And it was very stressful, I mean, being a full-time student and working full-time. I know Lovely uh, had a lot of uh, 
other obstacles outside of, of class to deal with, but she did a great job with managing the entire class yeah. along with Brett. And What's your advice kudos. to the next? You know, my advice to the students is just to in, in, enjoy what you do, enjoy the work. And I'm sure, you know, whether it's next semester or, or one or two years from now, that whole Oahu will, will change. You know, obviously it'll change, but um, just just keep that passion, and never lose that passion, and share that curiosity with life and with journalism with, with everyone. Keep that in mind. Try to try to figure out how you felt at least, yeah. and go forward in the same kind of passion and, mm -hmm. and energy. Mm -hmm. and, and of course you, Brad, you know, you, you created this, although they created it kind of at your suggestion in, in, that, in that academic, um, you know, crucible. Um, but my question to you, closing here, is what did you learn in this semester that you would apply going forward for the development of the same site? The most important lesson of this class, I think, is how if you distribute power, then everybody can rise and together. If you, can, if you consolidate it and try to uh, direct people and have a top-down authority, then you just get one vision. And if you distribute power to the students and see what they can do, they can do amazing things. What influence do you see this site having going forward? I mean, for example, the world is your oyster, or the, the oyster of your successors, really. And you could think of any story, any story in Hawaii or in the world. Um, how will that how will that change going forward? Do you think? Do you think it'll expand? Um, do you think it'll become um, more sophisticated, more global? Um, well, we have a, an important audience here that's underserved, and that's uh, 18 to what is it? 30. 30. 18 to 30 year old people who live on Oahu or or on Oahu are somehow connected to Oahu. And if you look at the number of people living here and the number of media channels, I think we have a pretty small uh, uh, representation in that. So um, I think it's important to serve that audience really well and see where that can take us. I mean, we have no shortage of stories. We have hundreds and hundreds of stories that students have pitched out and thought about, and they all sound great. So the, the main thing is picking the best of them and executing them well. Yeah, for the benefit of the community. For the benefit of the community. Yeah. These are stories, I mean, they're, they're just no shortage of stories that can be told here. Yeah. And they would um, really benefit this, this community in, in numerous ways. I agree with you absolutely. That's what we're about, you know, in our own way. So I offer you on the record at the close here um, to collaborate with us. We're always available for your shows, your stories. Come on, um, bring guests with you. Let's let's work together. Wonderful. A Hanukkah. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Brett, Jordan, and Bubbly. Great to have you here. Thank you. <laughs>